Hi, my name is Tess. I'm a filmmaker. I specialize in handmade animation techniques. Uh, usually I use a multi-plane animation stand to make my films, but my last short film, Orbit, was made with the phonotrope technique, and I get a lot of questions about what it is uh, or exactly how it works. Uh, so here's a video explaining my process for this project. Uh, first of all, credit goes to all the amazing artists uh, whose work was super inspirational for me as I was working on this, uh, and especially those who helped me out with technical questions like Jim Lefebvre, uh, Alexandre Noyer, and Neil Slud. Uh, as you can see, there are many different ways to use the phonotrope, and mine is just one of them. Basically, the phonotrope is a modern version of a zoetrope or a phenakistoscope toy that you may have seen or played with. Uh, when you spin the disc uh, and look at the animation directly, the animation is just blurry. But when you look at the animation through the slits, the animation comes alive. And that's because our eye needs a little break in between each image for us to register it. So the phonotrope is exactly the same, except the slits are replaced with the frame rate of the video camera that is filming the disc. So to get started, uh, first of all, we need something to animate. So we need to first draw our animated loop. And a question you might have is, OK, well, how many drawings do I use? OK, so here's the deal with the math. Video cameras record at a specific frame rate because of the number of images our eye needs to record movement. I use 24 frames per second. And usually, turntables spin at two speeds either 33 revolutions per minute or 45. I use 45. So that's 24 frames per second and 45 RPM. So the last factor we need to determine is the number of drawings on the disc. And to do that, we first need to figure out how fast is the disc spinning per second, not per minute. It's spinning at 45 revolutions per minute, so 45 divided by 60 seconds is 0 0.75. That means that in one second, three quarters of the disc is spinning past our camera, which is recording at 24 frames per second. That means it's capturing 24 separate images as this portion of the disc goes past it. So we should match that by also having 24 drawings here. But obviously, we want to fill the whole disk, not just use three quarters of the disk. So what's 24 divided by 0 0.75? 32. That's the number of drawings that we're going to be working with in this situation. So the animation starts off as a simple drawn animation on a light box. Uh, just remember that uh, your loop has only 1.3 seconds before it repeats, so it has to be a pretty simple movement to register in that time. So I've got my 32 drawings and I've scanned them and I've created a Photoshop file with each drawing on its own layer numbered 1 to 32. Each drawing is exactly on top of the next drawing in exactly the same place. Okay, So then I save my Photoshop file and open After Effects and create a new square composition. I import the Photoshop file, drag it to the timeline, and when I click through here I see all my layers. So what I've got to do is I've got to change the rotation a little bit for each layer uh, so that the animation becomes spread out into a circle. So I click R for rotation and then I have to change the rotation here. Now what angle? Well 360 degrees divided by 32 turns out is 11.25. So I've got to change each layer by 11.25 degrees more than the next layer. Now you see all your animation is nicely fanned out in a circle. So you save a still image of this and you print it. So 
pro tip, uh, include a cross in the center and a circle around the edge so you can easily cut it out. Okay, moment of truth. Set your turntable to 45 RPM and your camera to 24 frames per second. And there you go, it's animated. So that's it. The phonotrope is a combination of three factors. The frame rate of your video camera, the speed of rotation of your disc, and the number of drawings on the disc. And as long as those three factors are in sync, your animation appears in the center of your video. Of course, now that you know the basic math, you can play with it. Uh, by having one more drawing on the disc or one fewer drawing on the disc, you can make it appear like your animation is floating from left to right across the disc or right to left. You can also use just half the number of drawings from 32 to 16, as long as you're also having the frame rate from 24 to 12. Uh, for Orbit, I used a lot of smaller discs with just 16 drawings on them, uh, but also um, three big discs with multiple layers of 32 uh, drawing loops. Uh, you can also film your phonotrope with a phone camera, not just a DSLR, like I did for an interactive installation project. Uh, it does take a bit more work because you have to usually download a third-party app to your phone to be able to control the phone's uh, frame rate and shutter speed. Um, but it can be a really great way to experience the phonotrope as well. And if you're doing that, you can also print your phonotrope on a record like this flexi disc that I had made for Orbit. Uh, so this is a playable record with a version of the film soundtrack on it, and you can play it on your home turntable. Uh, and you can also film it uh, on your phone, and then you get a little cinema experience like at home. So basically the phonotrope is frame by frame animation that is filmed in real time. And once you get the basic structure down, there's lots of creative ways to experiment with it. Uh, and it's ultimately a really unique way to use and experience animation.